What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Basement Show. Cheese, Ramon, myself, here with a bunch of comics to review. We've got the Lock and Key Netflix series to talk about, as well as Robert Pattinson in the Batman suit. Aftershocks Undone by Blood or the Shadow of a Wanted Man. Boom Studios Alienated. Dark Horse's Blackwood The Morning After. DC gives us Batman Pennyworth, R.I.P. Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, Issue 1. Superman Heroes One Shot, Images Tartarus, and from Marvel we've got Gwen Stacy, Nebula, and Spirits of Ghost Rider, Mother of Demons. About time to start drinking, folks. We already started. We have already started. Salud. So, Kevin Descent, he left us a bunch of comments on our Season 13, Episode 4 release. It, it, that was probably... One of the most fun episodes I think we've had down here in a long time. We had literally everyone here except Chris Craddock. Mm -hmm. And we we greatly missed Craddock. And yes. but having everyone around the table and tagging in and out and everything was super fun. And Kevin said, I'm still making my way through that epic episode four. <laughs> Just got up to Liz singing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said, this, this is the greatest episode ever. I'm like 15 minutes in and I'm losing it. Uh, <laughs> and getting in on the love fest, I would I would not have watched this show for 10 years plus if there wasn't creativity, encouragement, and family. Thank you, sir. I mean, the, the amount of comments we got on that episode alone was yeah. just, it was actually touching. To, to quote Skeletor, it would warm my heart. If, if I had a heart. Yep. Whiskey Quest said, Much love to y'all. So much good stuff here. There's nothing scarier than a Latino walking down the street with her shotgun. <laughs> he said, Also, I'm Mexican, <laughs> and man, am I glad my last name is in Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real, guys. Nice. Cheers. Salute to you, Whiskey Quest. Thank you for always watching, brother. Mr. Fix-It's Comics said, Awesome show as usual, guys. You always make me laugh and appreciate all the love and camaraderie that you have with one another. You make the weeks always that much better. Keep on doing you and I'll always be here. Much love from Jose Antonio. Brother, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the kind words. And all of you, thank you for tuning in with us each and every week. You are the reason we do this shit. And you all have absolutely no taste. You did get none, but there's no accounting for taste. Nah. So I'm happy for it. <laughs> uh, Kevin also said, uh, this is the greatest episode. This episode is easily in the Pete's Basement Hall of Fame. Which brings me to, what episodes would you say make the hall? Also, what time did everyone wake up the next morning? Uh, I was off the next day, so I can't even count. I woke up around noon. I'm trying to remember what time I got home that night. Because I did have to I did have to sleep it off a little bit in the car before I drove home. Well, yeah. that's for the best. Like, yeah. Um, probably about 4 o'clock. As a point of advice... And then in not the fuck out until about 10.30. Anyone in New York City or uh, anywhere that that is dangerous to sleep in the car with your keys with you, mm. uh, either put the keys outside the car... In the wheel well, mm. or in the glove box, in the back seat, in the well, not in the trunk, because then you couldn't get them. No, you could, because if you're in the car, you can with pop with, the trunk. with my car, you could. Yeah. you could, you just could still just get them, as long as the car's on. Don't have the keys with you. Yeah, ever. Point of fact, uh, you can sleep in the car all you want. Don't have the keys on your person mm. because they can still bag you if they're being dicks. Fair. Not that I know from experience, but I know from experience. Uh, greatest Pete's Basement episodes. I would definitely say any of the specials that we've done. Yeah. The mm -hmm. Ramones Basement episodes, the, uh, the Scroll, the Scroll Basement, which? Drinking episodes, anniversaries. Oh man, the anniversary episodes are special. Yeah. Those are super special. Those, yeah, the the 400th was. Oh man, the 400th was messy. <laughs> the 500th is a really great camaraderie episode. <clears throat> we managed to get the, uh. Originals. The originals back. Adam, Steve, Ramona, myself. And uh, there's also the 10th anniversary from that same year. Was uh, We met 
the way the dates fell, we managed to have our 10th year anniversary on January 8th, as I recall, mm-hmm. which was the start of our episode. We had it uh, January 8th, 2018, and the very first episode was January 8th of 2008. I, I don't know when, it, I think it popped up on YouTube that Tuesday, but we filmed it on the 8th. Hmm. So it was... So what you're saying is we all need to get matching tattoos of 188? Honestly, I, uh, yeah, I think, I think we should. I honestly think we should. You can't be sure better than a Jewish cemetery. Whatever will I do? I don't know. <clears throat> Um, what, I have a favorite moment. It's when Danny scared you. Oh man, <laughs> which time are you referring to? The in the bathroom, just staring at you. Oh my god, I forgot about that one. Forgot about the bathroom episode. That yeah, part, just the one right there. When he popped up over, yeah, 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 that was a good one. Oh wow, the bathroom one. We had a lot of great moments <laughs> over the years, man. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> we we'll have to reach back into hallowed antiquity. Yeah, I would love for. Some old school basement fans to tell us their favorite moments Ooh, over the years. Yeah, just like just in general, and I mean, it, it, if you really reach back there, I'll send you like a free comic or some shit. Like there, there's got to be a reward for looking back that far. But some of you folks have been with us since like Jump Street, and it's absolutely amazing. Mm. So thank thank you very much. All right, lock and key. Spoiler free review. I know we promised a spoiler written review, but some people have not actually finished the <laughs> series yet. Which is funny to me because I get to complain now because I'm not the one who's guilty for once. I was just busy reading all this week's books. Well, I read most of them. Most. Most. Uh,. But for real, Ramon just bugged me until I, I couldn't take it anymore to read Lock and Key. And it's so amazing. And so this was the first series that I actually, I think I binged in a long time. I watched the whole shit in like two days. Wow. And my boy Joel, who I know from high school, hated it. That's really? putting it mildly. Hated really? it. Uh, and he's... He's right to a point. He said uh, it's dope as fuck up until about episode four or five. And then it falls off. And I'm not going to say it falls off. But. But. Right up until about episode five. It is. It's the comics. It's everything you're hoping for. It's the introduction of the keys. The characters. And you're just like, oh my god. They're really doing it. This is fucking amazing. And then it. It doesn't fall off, but it does take a really sharp left turn at Albuquerque, and it becomes a CW show. That was oh. the problem with October Faction. I didn't see. I didn't even. I didn't get more than an episode into that. But I, it wasn't for lack of trying. Every time I tried to watch it, I was stone drunk and just passed out. Alcohol saved you that time. But Lock and Key, man, like I was th- so thoroughly enjoying episodes one through five, and it's so good. And then 5 through 10 takes this whole, like, different take on things. There's different keys, different events happen, and it literally becomes a teen angst TV show with just the regular, typical tropes that you find in, in like, a C- like a Riverdale show. I mean, I know they need to add filler to it, because really it's just only, like, five volumes. It's six, bro. Yeah. And, and it's what, not a lot. I understand but, that, but here's what I was yeah. expecting. What I wanted in my heart of hearts, and I guess I should have mentally prepared myself for not getting, was I wanted six volumes, six seasons. Wow. They could have literally done every fucking novel as a season they and totally gotten away with it. Just They would have had to add filler. Which and they did. Or, or they could have given it an <coughs> HBO treatment and only done eight episodes a season. Well, I think it needed the 10. I think it definitely needed the 10. But it just... Man, I was... I was disappointed with it, the way that things happened. That's not to say it wasn't a good show. Please don't get me wrong. It was. If you have never read the books, and this is your first foray into Lock and Key, you're going to enjoy this. It's good. It's good. It's fucking... 
interesting, it's engaging, it draws you in, it makes you want to see more. And I'm not even going to say that the ending wasn't cool. It was it was good and it was super fucked up. It was actually there are pieces of the ending that are more fucked up than what happens in the books. Wow. Yeah. No, there, there's like one particular scene when you realize what the fuck is happening that you're like, oh, damn. Ooh. And I'm not spoiling nothing. Mm-hmm. Watch this shit. We will have a spoiler written review sometime next week for y'all. But the thing is, I read the books and... This is probably one of the first times that I've read the books first before this thing was ever even going to be made into a movie or, you know, a, a show or whatever. Typically, I hear something's going to be made into a show. Hope I try to read the books first. I usually fail. I'll watch the TV series. Then I'll read the book and be like, wow, the book was so much more engaging. Yeah, it is. This is when I'm like, wow, they had so much more potential. This is when I wanted to see so much more. And I didn't. I like the casting. I've seen two episodes. And I think the casting so far is very spot on. Casting is very, very on point. Dodge, hot as hell. Yeah. Oh, ridiculous. The kid might annoy you. But, I mean, really, let's be real. But he's a kid. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they do. Kids annoy you. Little crotch goblins. (laughs) Reminds me of Jennifer. Yeah. But before, obviously, the whole makeover. Uh Uh-huh. Well, now we're not a troll looking, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Just uh... Her voice, while she was in the well, kind of sexy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm here, Bodhi. <laughs> and then when you see her, her face, oh my God. Yeah. That face. Mm-hmm. I get it. Here's the anywhere key. What else can I do for you? No, I get it. I get it. I Listen, Sam, I'm not saying what you did was right, but I get it. <laughs> Overall, yeah, I encourage you, watch Lock and Key. It's a good show. It's good. It's just not the books. They take a very divergent turn after episode five. Are you going to enjoy it if you read the books? Yeah, I think you can. Uh, are you are you going to enjoy it in the same way? Are you going to be like looking forward to the same shit? No, no. So just dispense with all of that. Literally, the fir- all six books that you've come to know and love happen in the first eh, five to six episodes. And then after that, they just do things willy-nilly, freebie. And after this, after this, it's anyone's game, and they're just going to be pulling keys to use. That's it. Because it it, the show needs to be careful. Because if it pisses me off, I have Narcos, which is already available. I have um, Star Wars, which is coming right around the corner. Right. And then I have um, Carbon. What's his name? Carbon Ultra Carbon. Yeah, coming. Right. And you know, those I'm anxious to get on those. Mm. So if this show was to piss me off, I would easily wash my hands of it. Right. Because mm. I'm sick and tired of like taking shit. Like comic And you books, have Dracula uh Castlevania season three coming yes, soon. Which is usually short, but it's still good stuff. Comic books are so like ready made. The 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 literally the art panels are like Layout. Everything's there for Just you. Freaking follow Stop it. Stop trying to do your own thing. Don't be no, creative. I, Nobody's paying you to be creative. I, 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 I don't know. I, like, I'm trying to get inside the head of the people who write and produce a show like this. And it's like, you know, want, you know the, the balance between staying true to the source material and <clears> having <throat> creative license is such a fine line. I think you know, like, this but like just... for I, I kind of like, like knowing nothing because I, because I still we talked about this before. I haven't read, read this shit. Yet. I gotta read this shit, um, and I haven't seen the show yet. But you know, like we've talked about this before. Like you know, the fact that there are six volumes of Lock and Key, mm-hmm. and you're saying that they kind of blast everything's in one fucking season yeah everything from that is in one season like you guys you could have to do, have to do that. like even if you plan five seasons of the show you can have all that done by season three i mean i get it and i was license. afraid of this they didn't know if they were gonna get you know bought brought on for a second season and we still don't know i'm right. still fine with a cliffhanger leave, just leave the cliffhanger and if you know, netflix has to flake that's on them yeah what they should have done is like mr hill here's a bunch of money Write the scripts for us. But apparently, this show has gone through so many iterations. There was a, a, a pilot film for Fox with like Miranda Otto, who I love from Lord mm. of the Rings. Yes. That got scrapped. She played AON. Then there was uh, 
another pilot that was filmed for Hulu, and then Hulu dropped it, and now here we are. Third time's a charm. Yeah. And, you know, it... it was that what did you think of Lock and Key? Quiet, I, I would love to know what you thought. <laughs> Hit us up. Questions at PeachBasement.com. Just... Send me a whole diatribe. I, I'm really curious to to hear what you've got to say, and I'll probably read most of those on our spoiler written review when we do it. Uh, gives probably about a week or so. Ramon's just got to finish his shit. Mm. Sal uh, wants to know what do you think about the Batman peak. Okay, so Ooh. let's talk about that. Okay. We got our first look at Robert Pattinson in his Batman garb. Uh, screen tests. I'll let us say it's like reveal the same way they they did the Joker, like that one minute video kind of thing. Yeah. Yo, I actually like it. I do. It too. looks pretty cool. And keep in mind, it's just screen tests. Yeah. There's no CGI yet. There's no nothing. For those of you complaining about the cowl, the cowl the, the always collar. looks stupid. People complain about the collar. The collar. Is it like a weird little collar thing there? Oh, I didn't notice that. <laughs> I don't care. I was gonna say the cow the cowl. Always looks stupid. Everyone who wears a Batman cowl looks like they have a bubble head. And I've been over this in season 13 of the Basement Show before, and there's nothing you can do about that. <clears throat> bubble head. As long as you don't look as bad as The Flash from CW. Right. It's fine. Okay. I like the uh, the way that you know the bat symbol looks on the chest, and it looks yeah. like the uh, the Arkham armor. It's actual armor. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that rubber. It looks like box. somebody said it on our Instagram, and I I don't remember which which uh, account it was. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> if you go on our Instagram account, you can see the comment in there. It looks like a cross between the original Tech 27 first appearance and the Arkham Asylum armor, mm. and that's I I'm with it. I'm totally with I'm it. I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm gonna. You know, give it that old college try. Yeah. I don't want to shit on it immediately. I don't want to be that guy that hates everything right out of the gate, even though I usually am. Mm. But I'm, I, you know, I know, I'm trying. Well, I know. Here. Listen, uh, I know that Craddock's been excited for this since it was announced. Yeah. Well, since since uh, Mikey the Shadow yeah. even dropped the rumor that he was one of the front runners. Yeah. Yeah, and and I was like, <clears> you know <throat> what? Okay, I can I can get behind this. You know. I'm rooting for the kid because yeah. I really want him to get the Twilight stink off of him. Fuck yeah. And this is the movie that could do it. And he's a good enough actor. Yeah. Apparently he is. Apparently The Lighthouse is like one of the dopest films you could ever see. And I haven't seen this shit yet. And I don't know, it's like a black and white piece and they're all yeah. stuck. They're like stuck in a lighthouse and shit that's being battered by waves. I don't know, it's supposed to be real super fucked up and thrilling. Interesting. But yeah, I, yeah, I want to see more. It looks cool. Vegetable Tube says the cowl is like Batman 66 cowl. He, here's the only thing. See, now that that worries me. I don't want... This is something that I've noticed in uh, a lot of the Batman since uh, Michael Keaton. Mm. Shorter ears. I like my Batman with long ears. I want a, a high-eared cowl. Nah. I like Jim Lee's Batman. Come on! He said, Ones long ones is it's just think about it for the fighting um um sense. Somebody could grab your big ass ear. Why wouldn't it be a razor blade? It's Batman. Yeah, but damn, a razor blade, a freaking ear. Why not? He's Batman. He's Batman. Yeah. I'm just saying, like <clears throat> I, I don't know. I I like a long eared Batman, and that's what I'm going for. And. Right now, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight are both on Netflix, so I've been watching those. And it actually makes me want to watch The Dark Knight Rises again. I don't know why. <clears throat> Probably just to remember how much I don't like that movie, except for Tom Hardy. But regardless. You don't like the movie at all? Besides Tom Hardy? I mean, not really. the way that movie was written was pretty poor. Oh, yeah, no, there was some major issues, yeah. You Although, I mean, I mean... Tom Hardy's the man. You know, I think it's the true that Hardy... carries that movie. That is it. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, like you have to, you kind of have to watch it just to finish off the trilogy. Yeah. But like, yeah, Tom between Tom Hardy and I mean Anne Hathaway, just because I have a bit of a crush on her. But oh, that's fine. Yeah, she. I thought she was okay as a Catwoman. Now I like those now, heart to heart. She, she didn't get enough to be even known. She, she did, and yeah, th- that and that's wrong. a shame because she's a very good actress. They did too much. She's a very good actress, and I thought that she exuded a lot of Julie Newmar. In that role. Okay. Okay. And this is why I think it's amazing and awesome seeing that comparison shot where you had Zoe Kravitz as Selena Kyle. 
mm-hmm. in the Catwoman suit. And now I'm like, okay, now we got Eartha Kitt. See, Let's I go. like those moments that, like, besides Tom Hardy, I like those moments that uh, kind of bring it home for the viewer. Mm-hmm. The uh, Like when Batman's talking to Commissioner Gordon and he tells him, you know, the thing about being a hero is not risking your life for a city. It's not fighting a bad guy. It's offering your jacket to a kid when he's cold and alone. And he's like, Bruce Wayne? Like, shit like that, yeah. I fucking love. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Those are those moments that I'm like, yeah. like, yeah. that's that comic book moment and, for yeah. me. That okay. that reveal without the reveal. Yes. And I love, the. it's yes. so cheesy, but I fucking love those well, moments. And, and the thing is, is that, you know, that reveal happened in the first in in the. First it happened one. throughout the whole shit. Yeah. When yeah. he talked to Rachel, when he gives her the line like uh, "the measure of a man" it's, or yeah, whatever it's the not, fuck. It's, it's not who I am underneath. It's what I do. That yeah. And she's that like defined. Bruce. Yeah. And if it wasn't Katie Holmes, I probably would have been like, "Wow, that was really cool." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I I do, but she eh. she's about as wooden as this table. Oh yeah. Well. And between her and Maggie Gyllenhaal, it's just like, wow, could you have cast a worse actress for this? <laughs> Well, I would have been a better Rachel. I mean, I I, lo- I love curly hair and all. I love Maggie though. She's a great actress. Do you really? She's, she's just, not. She's just, she's just so a lot to look so at. So <laughs> Maggie. <laughs> but the thing is, I, I'm I'm so glad that you were that you reminded me the fact that you know, in all of this is also one of my favorite actors of all time is Gary Oldman. Well. I mean, the man is Gary Oldman. He's got yeah. the Midas touch. Like, the, the dude's... Fun. Like, he's one of... Like, I have a list of celebrities who... I don't want an autograph. I don't want a photo. I just want to sit down and have a drink and talk with you. I heard he's like, a dick in real life, which bothers me. Eh. But, you know... Eh, so, to each their own, I guess. Mm. So, so that... just spend a day with Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. Uh, yeah, yeah, now, they look like they're fun. Yeah, they're fun as hell, from what I've seen. Now, did you but. see Birds of Prey? No. Okay. You didn't did see not. it. I'm not in a rush to see it. I but I'm not in a rush to see here's it. Here's the funny thing. Now we heard a nasty rumor about the or like the whole plot line of this movie yes. was based around uh black masks stolen dick pics. Apparently that's not the case. Thank the Jesus. Thank the editing gods for taking that crap out. Seriously. I do believe Mikey and I do believe it was in there. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I believe that was definitely at some point a cut or in the script of the film. So apparently that's not the case. Good. And apparently from other members of the basement crew, that being uh, Red and Liz and Greg, yeah, yeah. Uh, they said the movie was pretty good. Yeah, and seeing mm. fun. Yeah. He liked it too. Yeah. yeah uh, she was asking about that. I And the overall like consensus from our friends is that the movie's pretty pretty good. And unfortunately, it's not getting the press that it it deserves. I heard it's good, but I heard there's also some issues with it. Like this, Cassandra Cain's in it. Okay. Not done right. Not done any justice. Okay. And she should be an incredible character to be in the, in the screen. Yeah. Uh, Renee Montoya is older than dirt. No, no. A hot, young Latina. Well, that, that's ass. Rosie Perez, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, she was hot a long time ago, but... She was hot a long yeah. time ago, and I mean, I'd still give it a business if she came to my house, but whatever. That doesn't say much. <laughs> not, not, you know, you know, hey, she's doable. You okay. call me a K- whore? K- no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but no. no. I mean, is. he is, but still. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's K- call it Kate as says, it is. something is stolen, but not that. She said, also, I was up and close up close and personal with Margot Robbie at the DC Universe screening. Like, next to her? Just like, like to yeah, her? like, I, you kind of need to elaborate on that, Kate. Sorry. Like, just touch her. Just yeah, I mean, mm. did she speak in in that Australian accent? Her, her normal Aussie accent is yeah. Her regular talk is just forget about it. Yeah, like, no, it she's amazing. Is weak. I actually, right. from the reviews of our friends, I really want to see this movie. Now I do. Yeah, my concern is besides those things I've, I've heard and I mentioned, is that I love the cartoon so damn much. Mm-hmm. How will it compare? Dude, you've been talking this thing up for the last couple of weeks, and I, I, I don't have a service. I told Rich to jump on it, and he loved it. Yeah. It is not kid-friendly. At mm-hmm. all. Good. 
at freaking all. Well, it's that's just... good, yes. Okay, so when you say not kid-friendly, <clears throat> is it at the Simpsons level of not kid-friendly or the Family Guy level of not kid-friendly? Beyond that. Beyond oh, wow. both? Yeah. Nice. There's violence, so it's, it's rated R. Gore, it's person. fucking rated R. Yes. And it's, Plain and simple. Rated it's R. It's a strong R. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially by today's standards, yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to need to get on that somehow. Maybe we should get a, uh, a basement outing and go see it, like some matinee or something. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's look into that. Because apparently the movie like bombed this past weekend. Sucks. South Park, yeah. not kid friendly. All right, that's accurate. Kate. Oh wow! All right, let's move into some comics. We've got Aftershocks, Undone by Blood, or The Shadow of a Wanted Man. Now I normally hate these or titles. Like uh, no, it's lengthy, and I hated typing this out for you. Yeah, I know. It was like- <laughs> Hell I thought like you missed a way. colon or something. <laughs> I hate this shit, but what it comes down to is it's actually two different stories yes. being told. It is. There's the yes. main story, and the main character is reading a book uh-huh. that is that the Shadow of a Wanted Man. The shit she's going through. She's an amazing character. Yes. She is. Yes. Well, she looks better with a shaved head. Uh, she annoyed me. Why? Because you don't run your fucking mouth if you can't fight. You ran your mouth and got your ass kicked. I think, I think but that's the point. No, I, but I... No. no. Okay. She's annoying, but... Okay. She's the hero of the tale. Passion okay. rules reason. Listen, I get it. Like, you're running in half-cocked yes. to a situation you don't she, know what you're prepared for. No, listen. She's running in not even a quarter-cocked because oh, she, does, she has no clue what the hell she's getting into. Quarter-cocked. Uh, I didn't say it. I'm just glad I didn't. <laughs> She is absolutely ill prepared for the adventure that she has set for completely herself. Completely in over her. Which shoes. is good. Yeah. Yes. Because she is trying to pain. avenge the death of her family. That's it. And we still don't know how or why they were killed. No, nothing. Yeah. And meanwhile, she's reading a book about this guy on the frontier in the 1800s, whose uh, son gets kidnapped, and his wife gets attacked, and, uh, and now, well, she hasn't dead yet. She, she's not dead yet. Yeah, I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it too. Or at the very least, they'll backtrack back to her and hold her for hostage at the end of it. Ooh. We'll see. Mm. Either way, uh, so you're following two different stories here. And I actually read the whole full two to three page afterward. Oh, of, you would. Of how <laughs> this dude deals with the situation of having a rifle pointed in his face. So they, you know, they actually they did tell kind of that. leave it off right there before the end of the book. And I, you know, I one would have hoped that they would have brought that into the second issue, but oh no, here's just the story of how he handles this situation. So you read a bookie book. I read a bookie book, technically. <laughs> I, I am on the proverbial fence about this. I don't like this main character. She annoys me because she's so ill prepared. Because if I were her. I like to think that I would not have gone off so half cocked. I would have prepared better. I would have Batmaned myself in but, advance. But you're different. You're Pete. <laughs> I I you, appreciate you're waiting that. for that reason to go off and have the a reason thing to kill somebody. Is, is that is that She's she seems to be drug. she seems to be like a young adult in like. You know, like they don't pa- draw just, her that way though. Just past college age, I'm talking. And they like draw her like in her mid twenties to thirties, and they right. should draw her looking younger. If that's the case, you're right. Story wise, she seems she's portrayed as like late teens, early twenties. Yeah. Right. She's and not like, drawn that and way. And like either the bad seed who left, or she was actually away at school. If she now, if she was away at school, mm, like kind of doesn't. Tie into her attitude and also the fact that she's knocking back a few before she gets into some yeah. shit. I really appreciate the sentiment, like, but you're Pete, and just <laughs> you knowing that I'm already mentally prepared and yes. more, more or less physically prepared for situations like this. Yeah. That's one of the nicest things you've ever said to me. It's true. Yeah. You're the Batman of violent situations. You're ready for this and this and this and that. I really can't thank you enough for that. You're welcome. That said, this is a cool book, mm. and uh, I, I definitely recommend it. I'm in for at least three issues. I, I'm more interested to see what happens to the lone cattle herder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that part of the story more, but yeah. like, because you know what it was? It's not to say I wasn't interested in her part of the story, but more happened to the gunman 
than to her. Yeah. yeah. Like, this, I needed more be, development yeah. in her story in the first issue, and I didn't get it. Right. But I trust Aftershock, I so I'm going to stick around. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. Agreed. Boom Studios alienated. This was fucking cool. This was pretty cool. It was. I I mean, honestly, if it wasn't... Um, what should I call it? I... <clears throat> the previous book was going to be my book of the week until I read this. Okay. And this this one got my vote because it was a pretty unique story and the artwork completely was unique. Gorgeous. Very good art. Yes. yes. Yeah. And I like the fact that it was three kids named Sam and yes. three completely different kids. Totally different. And yeah. Samantha, Samuel, Samuel, and Samir. And yeah. these are kids we know. Yeah. Like, right. We yeah. can think of like yeah. I you know, went to school with these kids. Yeah. Hundred percent. A hundred percent. And they all have to be <clears throat> dealing with their own shit in their lives. And they just happen to be walking the same path home and they encounter this thing, this weird ass thing in a forest. A, it looks like a, a glowing hive. beehive. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. Essentially. And all of a sudden, they touch the thing. Because that's what teenagers do. No, it was stupid. like they were compelled to. They were, yeah, like, like they were like, yeah. ooh. They're like, yo, I need your help. So all three of them were lifting the one Sam. But it was looked like it looked like curiosity got the better of them, and yeah. then they were yeah. compelled to. Like, yeah. he, they were all lifting him up. Like, he, like uh, the one kid was made curious, and then all their eyes started to glow. Like, what the, whoa. Oh, and, touch. you know, then all of a sudden they can telepathically hear each other think. No matter yeah, what distance they are from each yeah. other. Yeah. So that, that was pretty cool. And then, like, no spoilers at the end for what happens, uh, but it, it's it got a pretty dope-ass ending. <laughs> yeah. And they realize that I'm not sure if they're the ones with the powers or something else is, but this is a really cool-ass story. Yeah. Yeah. Boom yeah. Studios has been really on point they're with their... They've stepped up hard. Yeah. Dark Horse's Blackwood the Morning After. This is a sequel. Which I forgot. And you forgot about that. I realized I it know. and I didn't read it. I didn't know. Okay, I, so I read you read it, it too. Yeah. Okay, so... I remember the sequel now. So, now how I done. didn't read it because it was a sequel. Ramon forgot it was a sequel. Cheese didn't know it was a sequel. So it is I'm so curious, not jump on friendly. Is it not? He it is I, so I found not. it jump on friendly. Oh, huh? discuss. I, I, it's obviously you don't know nothing about the school, and that comes and in, nothing in about volume. what happened to the previous headmaster. You don't, but it goes on to it. it's like a mystery. What yeah. happened? What happened to his stuff? What's going to happen to the staff? You get pulled into like the drama of it all because it is a stupid amount of drama. Oh yeah, because and, this dude did not put did not. Uh, Mind his P's and Q's. Yes, he was very old. Very old. Age. Over 300, yeah. I believe. Uh-huh. So they felt he should have not been teach, uh, a professor, head, headmaster a long time ago, but whatever. He messed around with certain magic that he shouldn't have. Like, in this book, they tell you, like, yeah. magic is real, but couple, not everybody should deal with it. And a couple of uh, students, I think, got caught in the crossfire. Yes. Uh-huh. So Some he, fuck, he done fucked stuff. up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. Okay. It, it it is pretty cool, but still, I would like for the first half of this book, I was like, I have no clue what the hell's going on. Yeah, I, f- I totally forgot about the first one. I, I I'll go back somehow I remembered it. Like this was like a magic school type of thing, and I I don't think I finished reading the first one, but I think I got a couple issues in. But I remember liking it, and yeah, you know, that was that's part of the problem with reading so many number ones each week. Things it's something to keep review. Track of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's probably sitting there in the to-be-read pile, which just gets perpetually bigger and bigger. <laughs> now, you, now you know my struggle with TV well, shows. Yeah. No, I don't understand. Fuck you. <laughs> What's the fucking Punisher, asshole? Wow. <laughs> that was oddly I didn't, specific. I didn't say anything. Didn't <laughs> that was say, oddly specific. I, I didn't say anything. Uh-huh. From DC Comics, we got Batman Pennyworth R.I.P. So, apparently, a lot of shit has been happening in DC Comics over the last couple of months that the basement crew has been unaware of because, well, like we said, it's hard to keep up. We've been reading a lot of number ones and stuff, and here we are faced with these one-shots that are reflexive 
of stuff that has happened in the regular storyline. No. I didn't know Alfred died. Uh, yeah. Alfred Dunn got his neck snapped the fuck in half the by Bane. I gave up on Superman because... Well, we'll, we'll talk about we'll Superman in a little bit. Mm. I have been putting Batman books in the back burner because there's always one big event after the other. Yes. It started out with um, year one right. where... With the Riddler. Who took over the city. Right, Riddler. And lo and behold, after the wedding, or the non-wedding, right. that happened on long ago, they did a story with Bane where, guess what? He took over the city. Right. That got on my nerves, so I'm like, okay, I'm not going to read it. Lo and behold, and somewhere in that shit, somebody gets killed. Clearly. So that, that's pretty important. I blame DC for me not reading him. Okay, I fully accept the the blame for DC. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, no, I agree. And apparently, this happened a while back. Mm -hmm. And this is the memorial issue. Yeah. And even the interview that I read with the writer uh, had said that you know eventually, yeah, nothing in comics is permanent. Some writer at some point will bring him back, but if the death of Alfred brings a few good stories, hey, it was worth it. There is something that was done in this book that I love, and we'll... I would... What was that? Tim Drake taking over his... Anyway. He is my favorite Robin, hands down. Okay. He is smarter than all of them, and because of that, he, he, he sounds like the one that should be in the back cave while all of them are out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, so right now, like, uh, Dick Grayson has no memory of oh, what... Oh, Rick Grayson. Rick Grayson. This is an alternate universe, Dick Grayson. Is it? Is no, that no. what's... He got, hit, he got shot in the head and he, gets, he lost his memory. Oh, is that oh, it? Because, okay. you know, let's bring soap opera shtick into freaking comics. Pretty, yeah, pretty sure that happened to Reva in the Days of Our Lives or something. If I remember what my blood, mother was talking Haven. about. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. And he's wearing, like, a bow tie and shit. I'll say this much. I and he doesn't remember anybody, like, at all. The heir apparent should be Tim Drake. He's the bastard that will plot to defeat everybody around him, including friends and family. Okay. Yeah, I, he's basically I, I the that. most... The, he's going to win the superlative for most like Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So th this was, like... You know, th this was each of the members of the Bat family sharing stories of Alfred, and it was quaintly redrawn and reprinted of earlier issues of, you know, mm -hmm. th mm -hmm. of them, of them with Alfred, yeah. whether it was Bad Girl with, uh, you know, as far back as her first appearance or Damian Wayne when he first got to the Bad Cave and everything. And, you know, unfortunately, I yeah. do remember that, you, you know, for that. <laughs> oh, Grandpa's. and all with, uh, you know, with Bruce Wayne struggling to deal with the loss of his next father figure. It's not a bad book. It it's is. just, you know, like the writer said, eventually this is going to be undone. So, the with, impact of it. Yeah, the really, whole death of characters at this point, why bother? And even the writer did not want to kill Alfred. I learned this after, because the death of Alfred was a shock to me until I read this book. I hadn't been keeping up on Batman. I've, I had the books, I just hadn't read them. Mm -hmm. And I looked into it and. You know, the writer was like, oh, well, uh, you know, we'll just leave it as a cliffhanger and the next issue we'll figure it out, like, how he lives. And apparently the DC brass was like, no, 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 no. He's dead. Like, no, we like that. He should be dead. But, well, why? But you're just going to bring him back later. Like, no, 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 he's dead. And there you have it. He's dead. Until a later time when somebody inexplicably brings him back in comic book fashion. So it's just a matter of time. Give it a year. Maybe I mean, three tops. Yeah, I think so too. The th the thing is, is that not even ha not even being somebody who reads Batman on the regular, every single argument that every other person has for Bruce is completely and utterly valid. And the fact that Alfred was the one keeping everybody together and not Bruce. Yeah, yeah is, absolutely. Like, it was always Alfred. Like Bruce is fucked up. He's and damaged he goods. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and the thing is. I mean, he's supposed to be that level of fucked up to be able to, you know, be the guy to kind of keep everybody else in the JLA in check. I, and I get that, mm -hmm. but I still kind of want to see a bit of a redemption story where Bruce finally smartens up and figures out a way to bring to bring it all together. 
Nah, I don't think you'll get it. I, I, He's too I, I, fucked up for it to happen, but not, still. Not a, if not a redemption story, one where he fully u- utilizes the Bat family. Yes. Organizes them and makes well, that's, them an that's kinda I mean. yeah, that, no, That's kind of what I mean. That's kind of what I mean, where, where he can actually... You know, channel Alfred and bring. Like and now, bring it it's just too much. There's too much angst going on between all of the members and. And deservedly so. Bruce Robert is an asshole. Sequel, all of them and that'll help. No, yeah, so. I guess so. I'm beat right now. Just like a straight out of Stephen King's It. Just like let's just fuck all the members of the crew. Whatever. Sure. Why not? Also, I had no idea that Superman revealed his secret identity to the entire world. Yeah. Back in. December. Yes. Had no clue. Yeah, I dropped it at that point. I, nope. I have Hell not no. really been reading Superman at all. I I mean, I read Action Comics 1000, and that was about it. Like, I fell off after that. Leviathan pissed me off. We talked about that. Yep. And, I mean, they were bringing Leviathan into Supergirl and everything. Of course they are. Uh, <laughs> uh, but apparently, back in the first week of December, Kal-El, Superman, decided he was going to tell the whole world... That he's Superman. He's and he did. And this issue, Superman Heroes, is the uh, like the lead up and then the aftermath of it. And it's Superman basically touching base with all of his friends, his wife, his best friend Jimmy Olsen, and everyone else about what he's done. About the reveal. Basically like, hey, are we good after like, the fact? All of, you know, you've got uh, all of the heroes saying, hey, this is good. Good for you. Good for you. Batman's like, this is fucking stupid. And everyone else like, hey, good for you. And well, not every, not even not everybody in the in the Justice League was like, hey, good for you. Because that's even true. Because Ar- even Arthur Curry was like, I wouldn't have done it. Yep. You know, uh, Plastic Man was just in his own fucking world trying to be the Deadpool of the DC and stop that shit. Um, yeah. But, like, I mean, you know, I, uh, I had, like, most of them were begrudgingly ap- approving of it. Right. But I really liked the cutaway with... The uh, teacher? Well, the teacher was dope, but also the cutaway with Diana hanging and Bruce? out with Bruce. Yes, that, that was, was really good. good. That made the book. They need to hook up with her. They do. Well, see I mean, now. She, I mean, I like since, that one since Kal-El is married to Lois. They might as well, you know. I like the happen. cutaway with uh, with Diana and Bruce, where yeah. she's like, you know, uh, he basically admits like, I don't want to be jealous of him. I I'm normally not, except for this. Like, I I wonder yeah. what it's like to have both to have the hero life and the family and see, everything. That's an unfair thing that Batman is. He's being unfair to himself. Mm. Superman's a hero, right? He's a vigilante. Big difference. Yes. Huge difference. Right. And then he would be held liable for all the damage. So the fact much that he's shit. He's an ultra billionaire. It, it was just right. Right. Yeah. So it's. I liked the cutaway when he went to talk to his old teacher. Yes. There was, was something great. really you humanizing, nostalgic, old school. Yeah. Talking to the. You teacher. know me. And then he split before a teacher gave him. Yeah. Three. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is such a Pete, Pete thing. You knew I would <laughs> like that scene. Yeah. <laughs> And that, I don't know, there was just something so quaint about that. And like just so humanizing about Superman. Like I just would and I'm also, gonna go back and talk to my old teacher. And also unexpected. Yes. Y- you're not thinking you're not thinking about anything involving Smallville one iota. And he's like and I everything I learned, like I you know, it would have stemmed from this classroom. Like I learned to pick myself up from I, you. Yeah, but after reading that, it kinda gave me like, did they take this from um Captain America, he always got up. He never stood down. And then the fact that he kicked the garbage thing over, that just reminded me of that imagery when he was kicked over. Right. And he picked up the, sh- the shield. The Maybe. And I was like, okay. All right, who's to okay. say where things are yeah, inspired yeah. So from? I'm like, that's fine. It, Whatever. It's definitely very... I mean, well, it, it does illustrate itself to the, to the idea of, you know, Superman's exposure to the sun and how it took him a while to actually have his abilities mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And like, but... The fact that he was an alien getting used to the atmosphere of this world. He probably was a scrawny, like, pipsqueak of a weakling. Yeah. Got his ass kicked a handful of times. And then, at some point, it finally clicked and he's Superman. You know? On that note, I watched Brightburn, finally, last finally? weekend. Here. Finally. Thoughts? Yo, I really liked it. However, oh, it was too fast of a movie. 
Like, oh, everything oh. started to happen way too fast. Like, we went from dude's got powers to fuck, I'm evil. I would have loved more time. I would have liked to see everything fleshed out. I would have liked to see more of his psychosis, more of his struggle into trying to be a good guy, but not and being the villain. I would have much more accepted this as a Netflix series. And yes. I would still love it as a Netflix series. A Netflix series. series would be nice. A sequel would be nice where there's a team of resistance fighters yeah. fighting them, kind of like the boys. Yes. But they're obviously failing because in, in this, the movie, he's such a badass. Yeah. And he's, the only thing that no hurts him is a ship. Yeah. This is a good flick, yeah. but it all happened too fast. Yeah. I enjoyed it immensely. Mm-hmm. All happened too fast. Fucked up flick. Good flick, though. So we got Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, issue one. No. Just no? <laughs> no. Just no? Look, I like Amanda Connor's art. I do. Mm. And Jimmy Palmiotti was writing this, I think. Yeah. I so. and he was uh, co-writing along with Amanda Connor. And I don't like that kind of level of silly Harley. Okay. And we get really silly Harley, like Deadpool silly. Yeah, at one point when she was in Coney Island, she has a team of Harleys. One of them is Harlem um, Quinn. Harlem Quinn. Yes, it's just extra. That it's sound more than I can tolerate. And I'm like, I like the cartoon better. It, it's, it's almost, it's almost kind of like DC's finally doing something with New York instead of Gotham, and they're like. Let's make this as campy as possible. It, it was I don't hard. know. Like parts of this book were pretty were pretty cool and pretty interesting, you know, and somewhat endearing and funny. I mean, I kind of I kind of get it if they want if they want to portray her as more of a Deadpool esque type of character, um, because I mean they they need to kind of like take it in a unique direction now because she is like legitimately on her own. She's no longer Joker's love interest or sidekick for that the opposite matter. Enemy, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Now they're enemies, and now he's like, "Well, you're gonna be killed if you ever set foot in Gotham again." <laughs> oh, okay. The and... whole story with her and Poison Ivy. Meanwhile, there was a her and Poison Ivy meanie that did not end like that at all. So I'm like, "Wait, what? She's gonna throw that really messed up?" So there's up. continuity issues. Because I love the idea of them two yeah together uh, either romantically or really avoiding that like hinting around it hard right right yeah which is kind which is act, honestly pretty interesting whether it's a, a girl romance or a, 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 a legit romance or whatever mm-hmm. um but um i think the way it's everything was kind of like tying together i'm like i'm actually i was actually rooting for her you know but like dealing with uh, the mob bosses and whatever, and now like getting their attention. Of course, they're based in Gotham, and she's got to go back. Mm-hmm. You know, which you know, which will be pretty cool. But uh, then you have the Huntress and uh, which um, and was it? You had Cassandra Cain and who else? I forgot. Got involved. I forgot. It's just that's another point. The Birds of Prey. I'm a fan of. I remember jumping. They don't on, need Harley Quinn to boost them. No, they don't. I remember jumping on the series when Ed Bennis drew it. And that Brazilian bad boy just draws. Oh, Ed Bennis is just wonderful. Ed Bennis' artwork is just. You get it, and it was done great. Why are you gonna goof it up more? They don't need that. Mm. It should be a badass group. They should be daughters of the dragon. Right, right, right. In DC. Yep. And if anything, like they've been. That's more a good comparison. Before that, so I'm like, eh, 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 eh. Mm. yeah, well. So, no comparison to the Birds of Prey movie there? No, I don't no, believe so. Please. Okay. I hope not. So, what's Images Tartarus? Now, I was dissuaded by this that it uh, was a prison planet and not uh, the Greek uh, equivalent of hell. They're trying to make it a living hell type of thing, but don't... Sh- okay, I, I like the beginning of it. I ain't gonna lie. I did. But then it took an extra turn to introduce this crazy character, this woman in the bottom depths of Tartarus prison, all the way down beyond the old prison, like deep down, like you can't go any more down. Like she the juggernaut and Deadpool kind of thing? Yeah, she, she breaks out, she's killing people left and right, and she's such a badass, and and <sighs> next thing you know, most of the comic books about her daughter. I want a prequel to this, I don't want a freaking moral this. Like her daughter was raised by a military and all this other stuff, and something she goes for some medical thing, and then she, they find out wait who your mom really is. 
And now they're trying to kill her. And wow. all of a sudden, she's a badass, too. Like, wait, what? No, your mom was a badass. You were just a cadet there. You're not as badass as your mom. Oh, mom was such a badass. And then the art is just... Uh... So, like, are you sticking around with this? No, and... I'm not. Which breaks my heart. I'm kind of glad I didn't read it then. Yeah. I was really hoping for more. When I saw Tartarus, I'm like, yeah, so fucking... Like, some quote, sort of awesome ancient Greek type shit. And I just... I looked through the first pages and I'm like... Planet Tar this is Tartarus, Planet Xena, whatever the mm -hmm. fuck it is, and I'm like <sighs> See, I, I see Tartarus and I see think it. the final villain in Halo two. Of course. Well, you're, you're a fucking different kind of nerd. You damn right I am. Alright, let's move on to Marvel. <laughs> do we have to? <laughs> well, for the most part we do, but well, let's see what the fuck else is. I didn't read Nebula. What's going on with Nebula? What is this? Why is there a Nebula issue one? You know, because we loved her so much in Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. Wait, now, we do we love Nebula or do we love Karen Gillan? I love yes. Karen Gillan. We exactly. Love, we love Karen Gillan's Nebula. She's so yes. good. She's hot. And she's so cute. Yes. She's wonderful. She, she's a yeah. great actress. She's just so perky and just lovely and, and wonderful. And just and, a joy to be like around and seen. And she's like... In good shape. She's not like a freaky skinny model. Right. No. Like, no you could actually like. Right, she got. She's she got enough. She's hurt you. Yeah. yeah. She, she got enough. She's, not, she's, not, she's she wonderful in Jumanji. Jumanji. She's not Margot Robbie. Yeah. Jumanji. She's great in Jumanji. Yeah. So it's like okay. So then we get her and she's crazy violent. She's just, uh, just what well, she is in the comic book, which is a murderer. Okay, that's fine. Sure. She's getting this implant. Did you read this? No. Okay. She's getting this implant into her, which is supposed to be able to tell the future, but it doesn't. It's really just. For navigation, a, 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 prob a probability clip, um, chip, which tells her like, if I'm fighting you, situational you know, analysis, how to hurt you, you know, and so forth. Yeah. And that's cute, uh -huh. but something they, happens. They, they kind of tried to make her Iron Man a little bit because it it, be it basically became a threat assessment. Yes, exactly uh, what it is. module. Yeah, that she now has. So now she sees somebody who who can be perceived as a potential threat. And it's analyzing all the different points. Like, this might be dangerous. This might be dangerous. You really need to look after this. Yeah. You know? And shit like that. Well, she fights some avatar of balance or something. And... Yeah, basically the dude's a bounty hunter. Yeah. And like, then... In, in, yeah. in big-ass armor. This ain't a one-shot, though. This is no, going to go No, it's a series. Okay. It's a mini. She ends up on this planet after getting shot down in an escape pod. And she lost her memory. Of course she did. Why wouldn't she lose her memory? Because, you know, more soap opera shtick in comics. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you could be a bit more original than Amnesia. You would think. Yeah, that, that, I mean, honestly, like, it was a good book up until that point. What about, uh, Spirits of Ghost Rider, Mother of Demons? They're gonna bring back Midnight Suns, and they're just doing it the Yo, whole Yo, it looked way. like that, like, the last page, when you see what's up next, and you've got Punisher, Wolverine, etc. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're leading up to that, but they beating you on the bush freaking hard, and it's like this is about I, Lilith. Why do yes. I? Why do and I? Last have a week, so Lilith famously was um, the was first that? wife of Adam, yeah, and it's, it's in the comics, the Marvel, yeah. and whatnot. And this is interesting because she's doing things to try to Yo, change things. Yo, what up. is up with Dan Ketch? Like, is he like Hell's Knight? What the fuck is he? He became no, he's not Hell's Knight. It's Limbo. It's I think his name was Belasco or something like that. So he got the spirit of um corruption in him instead of spirit of vengeance. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Belasco? Yeah. Belasco. So he's like a guy from Bensonhurst who fucking like runs mozzarella it, to each different pizza pile or what? It's the realm um Magic used to run. Magic. Yeah, sure. Run. And now he took over back and it's That's his, right. Yeah, she trying got to get him. She got her power boost from Belasco. Because Mephisto was stuck in a casino in Vegas because... Right, we know this. Wait, what? We know this yeah, from, uh, I believe ago. it was Marvel yeah. Comics 1000. When so they... wait a minute, you can, you can imprison Mephisto in a casino in Vegas, but you can't fucking undo one more day? The, we don't bring that up. We don't, <laughs> I, no. Fuck! So this, this guy, um, Blaze, who I don't give a rat's ass for as a ghostwriter, isn't the ruler of hell. Or more specifically, Mephisto's realm. Right. So people, he's always constantly being challenged. 
And then, um, yeah, I saw that. He had to fight Deacon Frost, yeah. of all people, so, who looks way different than uh, Stephen Dorff Dorf in the Blade movie. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, all tattooed and jacked up and shit, and well, some minute, motherfuckers are still a, trying to ice skate uphill. They heal exceptionally well. Uh, uh, I do that, no. So... Don't what, ask questions. What is it, like garlic-infused ink? You're trying to make sense of that, so that's a mistake. You, you're being... <laughs> There's You're being ag- silly and logical. Stop There's that. an agreement between the different Got rulers of realms not to mess with each other, so whatever, whatever. Okay. So Belasco's like, Limbo, maybe I should take over Mephisto's realm. And Lilith's like, yo, let's do this. I'll help you out. And it turns out she gives birth to her a new self. I'm, I mean, I'm all right. I like the idea of Lilith, the story of Lilith, the mythology of Lilith. Um, Listen, I'm always a fan, so... Yeah. So I was like, oh, hey, okay. I'm not going to start following Ghost Rider. I'll wait till the damn event happens because it's going to happen. And regretfully cover and review it, and then see what happens. Well, I'd, it's about to be that, I mean, I have a, I have a feeling it'll they'll drag it out, and then mm-hmm. and then right after they drop that, they'll be dropping hints in the MCU or in the TV realm about Midnight Suns being a thing, which we, you know, we kind of have an idea that that's what they're leading up to anyway. That is the biggest fucking like harbinger of the future I've heard on the Pete's Basement show in a long time. Oh it's, we'll review it and like look forward to the, the fucking event that unfortunately is bound to happen. Yeah. And, and that's that. Like that's, that's it. That's, yeah. that's Marvel in a nutshell. Here's that's the event that's unfortunately going to happen. And yeah, we'll tell you about it. Marvel. It's not even like we look forward to this shit anymore. I feel they're using their comics, Disney's using uh, Marvel comics, as a sounding board. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. We're throwing this out. What do you think? How, how about this? Oh, we got demons over here. We got a whole mutant world over here. We got um, Captain America doing whatever the hell he's doing. So they're, they're just using it as a sticky board for potential movies. Yeah. Like, what do the fans respond to? Mm-hmm. You're probably right. Yeah. You're unfortunately probably right. Meanwhile, there's not surprising forget either. all of the new nonsense. There's an entire fucking 60 years of stories mm-hmm. that are amazing. Yeah. That they should be pulling from. Yeah. They have all of this written out for them. Yeah. The problem is writers who want to make shit, quote, their own. Stop it. Also making things more... <laughs> Modern and more accessible. To yeah, the nobody's earth. asking you to do that. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Last but not least, we've got Gwen Stacy, issue one. Who asked for this? Now, nobody asked for Nobody this. asked for it. I like but, one thing about this. What's that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear what your, uh, what your fancy holds. <laughs> Gwen, the Gwen Vengers. <laughs> I love that spread page. I would pick up that book. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. They all look badass. I'm like, okay. Yeah, they do. All right. And they do. <laughs> okay. Gwen Vengers notwithstanding, I read this book, and the only reason I gave it any fucking credence was because of Christos Gage. Yeah. And you know what? You liked it. I actually enjoyed it. I knew it. you would. I it really takes did. Place before she met and got with him. Yes. yes. This takes place prior to... And the tie-in was really well done. Yeah. yeah. No, the it's, re- it's really, really good. Well yeah. This takes place before the events of... And then proceeding after Amazing Spider-Man 31. Way back in the Silver Age. Before the first appearance of Harry Osborn, Gwen Stacy, and Norman Osborn. We already had the first appearance of the Green Goblin back in issue 14. And now we're still trying to figure out who the fuck the Green Goblin is. He's been... Yeah. Shut up. Stop that. We don't talk about that. (laughs) We don't talk about that. (laughs) (laughs) You derailed me completely. (laughs) Totally, yeah. What you have here... Is basically the there's the story of Gwen and her father and Harry going to a school before they transferred to Midtown High. And this is all based on the title 
of the original Gwen, like, I don't know if it's the original Gwen Stacy storyline or something that Harry Osborne said where she is the, the star of, I don't know, Uptown High, whatever, whatever the fuck she was. I they, can't think of it. She was fine to be like the school pr- class president. But the she, school. they're they're going to a different high school, yeah. and the the title of the story was the star of X high school, and I'm sure I'll remember it at the time of editing. But as of now, I'm drunk and I don't remember. Well, I'm, but I'm looking it up. I'm looking it's it up. 1966, and here you go. You have all of these new characters, and. This is the story before they met Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. And in the process, they meet Peter Parker. And you are introduced to Norman Osborn, who would later be the Green Goblin. Yeah. And it's... The Beauty Queen of Standard High. The Beauty Queen of Standard High. Standard High. Thank you, sir. High five. Research. Yep. That's why we have these things. Beauty Queen of Standard High. And she's running for class president. And Harry's trying to help her. And at some point it looks like there's either going to be a transfer. Or maybe a merger of the two high schools. But this is something we can look forward to. In the future issues of this book. And as I read the afterword. Because I really wanted to know. Where within the Spider-Man mythos. Is this taking place. And it is between the issues of. Let's say 28 and 39, give or take. 39 being when Norman Osborn uncovers Peter Parker's secret identity in that classic Romita cover. Which I have double signed by Romita and Stanley. It's so fucking, it's such a great cover. Yeah. So good. It's probably my favorite Spider-Man cover of, of all time. One of the most iconic. It yeah. really is. It truly is. This book sees Captain Stacy going up against the uh, my, uh, Fancy Dan... Montana and the Ox was I forget the what the Lobo Gang or whatever. No, I forget what the fuck they call those three idiots. Something trio. What? Something trio. Yeah, I don't remember. They drew her father really old. They always they, drew her father old. They, they drew, drew her father like style. they drew Aunt May. Yeah. Like yes. they always drew old people mad old in the sixties. Like what the fuck? Like you're just so supposed they, to be a dad they, in his forties, maybe fifties. Yeah, a lieutenant. And a, no, oh, captain. They still stay captain. true to how he was originally introduced, though, in the comics. True, yeah. but now they've introduced how he had a limp originally in the comics, where he got shot in the leg. I would never have read this book if it was not for Christos Gage. That yeah. that was my sole reasoning behind it, and I'm like, yo, if he, if he's writing it, I'm gonna give it a whirl, and I. I can't believe I actually liked it. It's good. It It's reminiscent of original old school Spidey stuff. Yes. And you see Peter Parker sitting in a library just, you know, just quietly, squirrely reading a book. Off in the background. Like, he, you know, he's nothing. He's nobody. He's not the central figure of this story. Right. At least not yet. Not yet. First issue. We'll see. <clears throat> if you're a Spider-Man fan... I think you're gonna like this one. I think if it's a mini, I I, I would like it's to. It's like see five it, six issues. I would like to see it end with them transferring to Midtown High. Yeah, you know, it's five. I I could actually deal with that as the end of them bring you know being brought in. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing I think is, or even I would even accept that as the middle issue and see where it goes from there. Right. And then her like, you know, acclimating to the friendship of Peter Parker and the rest of his crew. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, because Gwen actually appeared I... before Mary Jane. Mary Jane didn't appear until thirty, no, forty one, I think forty one. Uh, yeah, to correct me if I'm wrong, but it was around there. But Gwen was first, right? It's a good book. Okay. It is a surprisingly good book. Well, agreed. Well, that about does it for us. Oh wait, we've got some questions. Uh, Absolute wants to know, Pete, what is the most obscene pizza combination you've seen on a menu? And you can't tell me it's Hawaiian. Okay. So besides that, 
Uh, I have seen. Are you talking about like besides shit that I've seen on the internet? Because that's some gross stuff. Like the, the internet in, is dark and full. The of internet cows. had peas and mayonnaise. That was gross. That was. The, oh, whoever think, thought that up should be fucking shot. I think two like their two. whole family should be shot. Women, children, parents, grandparents, everyone, their entire line should be wiped off the face of the earth. Fuck that. I, no. I, I There's no mercy. I can't argue with that. There's no mercy. I really can't argue with that. Then there was that whole thing about pickles. I no. love pickles. I love pickles. I love pizza. I don't think pickles and pizza ever need to interact. No. You should just be fucking kicked in the balls a number of times. Keep your, keep For your every your member your of your family that could potentially progenate, you get kicked in the balls. That's fair. Okay. Yes. That works. As for what pizza topping I've ever found on a menu to be completely horrendous, I will eat almost anything. Almost. I know Two Boots does a lot of crazy stuff on their plate. I don't like Two Boots because they have a weird crust. Oh. They have a weird, like, flaky, fuzzy kind of oh. crust. That it's not the same as a regular pizza crust, and I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> Penny is probably going to bake your noodle in a second. Oh, Jesus. She says, we make focaccia at my job that has pickled cauliflower seasoned a bit like pepperoni. Okay. I like, I actually like cauliflower pizza. Uh, it's something that I've tried to experiment with I, while trying to lower carb intake, and it, you know, it's surprisingly good. Cauliflower is surprisingly versatile. Yeah, it is. Um, r- mashed or riced, if it's seasoned right and cooked right, it's delicious. I've heard things about cauliflower pizza. My mother has actually made like buffalo cauliflower, mm. which is pretty good. As long as you don't try to disguise it as chicken, I think it's okay. Exactly. Yes. You know, if it, you just tell me I'm eating buffalo sauce and cauliflower, I'm okay with it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And you know what? You could throw that. In, you could throw that in there with. The buffalo chicken with the wings or whatever, yeah. and just say, "Hey, we're just gonna try to make this healthier." So yeah, okay, abs to it. to answer your question, I think uh, I think that picture on the internet of the uh, of the peas and mayonnaise that was gross. Those that made those people up, that made me legit throw up. In my those mind. people should all be killed. Yeah, their whole family should be killed, and mercilessly with flames. Just kill it with like, fire. Make them suffer. Kill it with fire. Yeah. All right. And that about does it for us at the Basement <laughs> Show this week. I want to thank my cousin Shannon and my boy Tom for hooking me up with this Doc Holiday it Funko Pop. It even looks like Val Kilmer. Yo, it's awesome. And it it's even got the red drunk eyes just like me. I mean, just like Doc Holiday. <laughs> I'll be a Huckleberry. Don't worry, Ringo. Oh, and there's other uh, there's other Doc Holiday special editions that I'm going to have to get from my Funko Pop collection. There is the one with the two pistols. Where he tells Ringo, don't worry, I got one for each of you. And then there's the one with the cup when Ringo starts, you know, swinging yeah. his gun around. Yeah. And Holiday's like... That was in... Um, just making fun of him. Casino. And, yeah. yeah, it's so good. One of the best movies ever. It is. Ever. Easily in my top three. Mm. It's like Gladiator, Tombstone, Avengers, no particular order. Right. Seriously. It's, it's true, too. Yeah? Yep. That happened. You, you, you got to break it up between comic book movies, so it's like, <laughs> you know, you, you got to bring other stuff in there. True. So, uh, shit, yeah, that's about it, right? Plugs. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Hit us up. Questions at PeteSpaceBasement dot com, Facebook dot com forward slash PeteSpaceBasement, Instagram, Twitter, etc. At Pete's Basement. Thank you to all of our patrons. You are doing the gods work many 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 gods and you have provided us with this brand new mevo camera and there's so many other things that are coming in the future uh the ability to stream to multiple platforms so if you haven't jumped on the pete's basement patreon yet i highly encourage you to do so we've got some really awesome prizes not the least of which is uh cool ass t-shirts hoodies Signed merchandise, free comics, and uh, even a trip to the basement. Yeah, even that. Go on Pete'sBasement.com forward slash Patreon to learn more. 
Want to pick yourself up a cool Peach Basement t-shirt? Head over to represent.com forward slash store forward slash Peach Basement. We've got basement tees, hoodies, t-shirts. We've got Breaking Nerd News tees, hoodies, and we've got Zen Rockstar t-shirts and tank tops. All waiting for you to pick up and send us a picture of yourself rocking all of our gear. And we will show you off in a future episode of The Basement. That's all going to happen on episode 13. By the way, I am working on some really awesome, uh, there's a slideshow of everything. So, when you get your shirt or your hoodie or whatever, send it to us. And so I can throw it in there. And edit it right on it. Yeah. We're going to make you internet infamous. That's what we do. High five. Yeah. Oh, did I forget anything? Oh, yeah. Subscribe to the hall. Me and Ramon fill out a full list of all the comics that we're picking up each week. We want to share it with you. (laughs) We've got a really great newsletter that goes out each and every week. We're proud of it. Steffi puts in a lot of effort. You should subscribe. All it takes is one email. We promise you will not get spammed at all. You're going to get one email per week. You can read it. You can ignore it. I encourage you to read it because, like, you know, there's some pretty funny shit in there. Shit that you don't see sometimes in the show. It's fun. It's cool. Subscribe. That's all you got to do. Just send over an email, and that's it. PeachBasement.com forward slash hall. Done. And shit. Well, that's about it, isn't it's it? That about does it. Yeah. yeah. I'm drunk. He's drunk. Ramon's not drunk. I'm but not drunk. I'm buzzed. We appreciate all of you tuning in. Thank you. Once again, hit us up. Questions at peachbasement.com, facebook.com, forward slash peachbasement, Instagram, Twitter, etc. at peachbasement, because I can't remember if I actually said that. Or not, but I'm pretty sure I did. You did. But and not, yeah. yeah, I did, right? I yeah, did, right? You're good. Okay. You good. So, yeah, we'll see you next week. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, go out, get drunk, take pictures, and please, please remember on this Valentine's Day, a public service announcement from Pete's Basement. Oh, no. If you go out, if you drink, don't park. Accidents cause people. Peach Basement is copyrighted 2020. Ripped Productions. All rights reserved, so go fuck yourself. When you watch it on YouTube, you'll see it all stitched wonderfully together. And I hope you enjoy it now, because I'm going to stop editing soon. I really am. (laughs) After the 13th episode of the 13th season, which falls on Friday the 13th in March... All of these episodes are going up raw dog, completely raw. And I want to give a big shout out to Kevin Descent, who happened to figure out that the uh, like we, we could have a little basement rhyme scheme with the old Dr. Dre song, Oh Baby, I Like It Raw. But he was like, Oh Baby Pete uploads it raw. Oh Baby Pete uploads it raw. So that was one of his comments on uh, one of our past episodes. So thanks, Kevin. I'm judging you. Yeah. What? You didn't so, think I knew that song? Or are you judging my are you judging my karaoke skills? Yes. Come on now. Peach Basement karaoke has to happen. The Peach Basement karaoke is gonna have if Hannah has her way, there's gonna be a Peach Basement karaoke. Oh and I, I Isn't do- karaoke Japanese for tone deaf? Am I wrong about that? <laughs> my entire purpose in life is to serve as a bad influence. I am that toxic friend. Uh, that's me. The whole swirling rainbow thing. You don't like the swirly rainbows? I like swirly rainbows. Swirly rainbows are great. Uh, it says I'm recording. On Facebook and... Wait. Well, I got the notification for Periscope, which I'm logging on to right oh, now. Wait, no, fuck that up. Yeah. There we go.
Happy Valentine's Day Eve. Happy Valentine's Day Eve indeed. Top of brother off. Sure. That's a lot to drink, cuz. It's early yet. Might as well just polish this shit off now. He's off tomorrow. We've got breaking nerd new tea. Blah. <laughs> That was great. Breaking, Breaking nerd, nerd nude. Oh boy. Nerd nude. That is a Photoshop waiting to <laughs> fucking happen. Oh boy. Yo, wow. That's Send going right in the outtakes. <laughs>